The recent layoffs have been insane. The reason why we can stay alive is because our costs are very low. More than, I don't know how many percent of businesses will fail within the first three years. Right? But at least yeah. we hang, hang, make it past yeah. the part. Why, you know, thinking like a cockroach has kept him very safe <laughs> like, as an individual. Yeah, yeah. And he taught me that and yeah. we are applying that to our business. Even before AI has come around, I think Singaporeans have always had to play, especially in the animation space, right? My co-founder would say, move up the value chain, mm, which mm. means that you want to do the work that is paid more mm. that less people can do. I really don't consider myself a very successful entrepreneur. Hey guys, and welcome to yet another episode of the Singaplex After Office Hours podcast. And today we have none other than Go Wei Chun, Hi. co-founder of the famous The Woke Salary Man. The Woke Salary Man is known for this very introspective approach to finance mm. that's very human right mm. and you yourself having been coming across the causeway to work in Singapore yeah. what would you tell your younger self I think I wrote it in the comic but I forgot what I said in the comic but it has something to do with the, the fact that like, it's something my mom told me that I don't need to be the best I just need to try my best mm. and then uh, I think this will apply also to a lot of young people that uh, it's very easy to compare yourself with other people nowadays and, and other people's standard or their max potential best. But what you have should, should worry about is your own best. And that's what trying your best means. Uh. Mm, your so own think, best. Yeah. yeah. Just maximize my own deck of cards that yeah. I have. And you don't get ah, to choose yeah, sure, the, sure. the, yeah, the deck of cards. You get, don't get to choose the, the cheap the you start off with. Right? Yeah, yeah. So look at this and then play the best play that you can and that's it. Don't compare your outcome. Compare your effort and your, your maximization of your potential. So try your best. Mm. That's what I would say. I think that's a, a really... Um, different mindset to what we see in the sentiment online nowadays, right? Mm. Online, there's like all the the defeatist uh, doomer memes and like lot, you know, and things like lot, that. And yeah. and you see, do you think it's because people like to compare on social media? I think that's definitely it. But it's it's interesting that you say the doomer memes also because you also see the other side where people flex and they, they flex, they too flex hard. the hustle. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of this I think also come from insecurity. Oh, you know, okay. so. And what you see online is not real one. Nah. Yeah. Like, I, I say this as somebody who makes stuff for online also. Yes. A lot of it is you are, you are, and we have to do this for our stories because say on Instagram, we only get 10 pages for an yeah, album. Yeah, correct, correct. So I have to essentialize, I have to take out some bits, I have to zeng some bits, I have to take out some, edit some aspects. So everything is edited. Nah, you yeah. know, so when it comes to the sentiment online, I'm also not sure. I see both sides. Eh. It, it's see both. both sides. Sometimes right. people need dark side, like to, to make you feel good. Also, you want catharsis to, to yeah. delve in the darkness <laughs> okay, that you okay. feel. And then sometimes you need something light to, to remind you of, of better times. That's why I, I like art in both of its forms, the dark and the light. That's why I, I like Singaplex a lot also thank because you, you. of the kind of interview <laughs> we's that you all feature are mm. not typically the ones that you see featured in a lot of other places. Uh, that's true. And that's for a very good reason. It's hard to sponsor content with some kinds of interviewees. I won't say which one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe this one also, right? Yeah. But, you know, to, to take the effort to, to delve into the darker side, it's also great. Because that's how, for example, light works like this. With with bright lights, it comes dark shadows and you can't live life without the other. Mm, mm, yeah. mm. And speaking of um, dark shadows, uh, currently the economic climate seems to be a more somber kind mm. in Singapore or recent yeah. times, right? And then um, we understand that your business, the Woke Salary Man, the, the creative company, the content house that you have built, right? You have actually survived through COVID. Mm. and then you have like uh, you know thrive to this point what do you think is the some, are some of the lessons that you have taken with you along the way lessons in terms of content production or running a business or what uh, both or both yeah. uh. so I had to caveat first uh, because I, I really don't consider myself a very successful entrepreneur or not mm. uh, oh. I, 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 I have a very limited entrepreneurship experience the, the work ceremony is my first company and it's my only company that I've co-founded or started and we are only five years old, which is like nothing. At least I think we make it past the first three year mark, which is say like, you know, yeah. more than, I don't know how many percent of businesses will fail within the first three years. Man. Ah, yes, so at least we hang, hang, make it past yeah. the part. But I think one of our biggest strengths that we have so far, in contrast with everything else that's happening around us, is the fact that actually, contrary to a lot of what businesses are doing now, especially startups, right, is that, we did not focus on scaling mm. and we focus more on building, I think what is called a lifestyle business. Meaning mm, mm, mm. we want to build 
a workplace that is fun for us to go to work. At the beginning. Yeah. 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 Even now also, I, I feel yeah. like sometimes I feel like I'm an employee even though I'm also an employer. Mm. In fact, we have a fantastic uh, uh, BD slash project manager who technically is our employee, but she tells us what to do every day oh, because okay. we are not good at that management. Ah, part. Yeah, correct, so correct, correct. we had to give up that, that, that top line of management to somebody oh, else. And yeah, yeah. it was difficult, but it has turned out to be a tremendous decision. So because we didn't scale and we're not so much focused on just, I mean, money is also important to us. I also want money, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but because the focus was more on making something that we would like to work in, mm. we didn't get caught in the trap of like thinking about scaling in terms of like how do we become a 50-man company or 100-man company or 500-man. Yeah, yeah. We didn't think yeah, about yeah, it because yeah, yeah. honestly, the, the, the path in front of us, it forks out. Mm. And we don't even know if this one that we, we chose uh, is correct. Mm, mm. Let's say we want to be like a 150-person company. What does that mean? Like how much money would we have to make to cover rental and overhead, mm, mm, mm. then like what is the product that will sell? Because right now we do a lot of sponsor content, but sponsor content ain't gonna cover 150. Yeah. Does that mean we need to come up with a financial product? Then is that something we even want to do? Yeah. So by just really staying true to what we want, perhaps selfishly, you know, because some people will tell us, actually for your business, uh, you're stupid to not go here. Because it's so obvious, you need to create financial products that you sell to take commission yourself. Mm, mm, mm. But that's not a game that I want yeah, to yeah, play. Yeah, because that's a bring um delves into another side of um creation that you are actually not a specialist in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right and right, we right. can learn it. It's an option that we mm. have, but I just feel like it just didn't feel right. Mm, mm. And actually in, in contrast, like so you mentioned this economic climate that's very somber, it's damn true, you know, like think about layoffs and stuff, especially we we all in this room come from the creative industry. Yes, correct, correct. The recent layoffs have been insane, yeah. right? Intense. Like, intense, intense, yeah. Intense. Yeah, yeah, so, like, the actually the reason why we can stay alive is because our costs are very low. Because mm. we have very low overheads mm. overall. Because we did not scale unnecessarily. Mm. So the way I think about scaling is like, if you want to give me money, I will want to take it, but I also don't want to take it because I, I take for what? Yeah, for what? I won't just take for <laughs> no reason. What's the use for yeah. this money? Yeah. So some uses that I have in mind, like if you want to say, co- produce a, I don't know, animated pilot of 24 episodes. You need a million dollars for that. Ah, then I take investor money maybe. Mm. But if I don't want to do that, I will not just take your money and give up equity for no reason. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So that's the way that we're thinking about it. And so far, by staying small, so far, like you mentioned like a business like a cockroach. Yeah, I yeah, really yeah. think we identify Co- with that. Cockroach business. Cockroach yeah. business. And that's something my co-founder wrote a great story about. He said like, why, you know, thinking like a cockroach has kept him very safe <laughs> like, as an individual. Yeah, yeah. And he taught me that and yeah. we are applying that to our business also. That's we are like true, a cockroach. And cockroach, not in the dirty sense, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. we are very low maintenance and we are almost apocalypse proof as a result. Correct. We work very hard to maintain that low maintenance. Yeah, so I, th- I think it's great because uh, here at the Singaplex After Office Hours podcast, we also run a very cockroach business, uh, which oh, is yeah. actually my <laughs> consulting business. Like, yeah, yeah. So, um, like and subscribe. So, yes, like and subscribe. Talk about this philosophy of being the cockroach in the creative scene, right? How do you see the future of uh, the creative trade going? Because a lot of the the creatives in our industry, they are, they are sh- have this identity crisis, right? Where AI take over my cartoonist yeah. job because you're in the art yeah. art sector, right? And then you're yeah. a copywriter, also, yeah, right? Yeah. You like writing copies, so copywriter, of course. Uh, yeah, chat GPT. Yeah, 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 then okay, okay, on okay. the illustration side is Mid Journey yeah. and uh, whatnot. So I don't know. It's it's hard to guess, like. I, I just, I just, I'm very scared to say too much too honestly because I also don't want to piss people off. Yeah. yeah. And I, I also, I'm definitely afraid that I'm wrong about something. Then mm. in five years, hey, which one you say this thing that I follow they, you? They, they dig up the episode. Yeah, so this like, is just, <laughs> from, yeah, just from my own perspective, I'm yeah, also yeah. not speaking on behalf of my co-founder or the work salary, right? But I personally like making the thing. Why That's would I better. outsource the fun part <laughs> to, somebody else. to somebody else even if it's a robot? So, if I outsource it to my colleague who's a fantastic illustrator and storyteller, I still get the fun from art direction in terms of mm-hmm. discussing the ways that we can frame a story. Mm-hmm. The crafting um, of it. Yeah, we, we did one piece recently uh, in lieu of the A-level results coming out about a girl who failed her A-level. Then we had it take part. At first, I draw the, the storyboard in a long kang one. Then they asked me why long kang. I just thought long kang very, 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 like very down in the bottom. Yeah. But it's not realistic that somebody see a long kang. So yeah, then yeah, we yeah. discussed it became a playground. 
So this kind of stuff is still interesting to me. I don't want an AI to decide that for me. Yeah, yeah. So maybe parts of it can be outsourced. Like I would love, for example, like sometimes I draw like works and comics. There are crowd scenes. I draw oh, yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct, correct. That's correct. brainless work. I yeah, mean, yeah, that's yeah. just that's not very high value. Uh, yeah, and I have uh, techniques that I get around it. Like I draw like five people, and then I clone, 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 clone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct, I, correct. I flip, <laughs> and I clone, clone, clone. But if I can outsource that to AI, I would strongly consider it. That's true. But I feel like um, maybe unrealistically, or maybe this would be at a loss to my company, I would love as much as possible to preserve the creation process mm, mm, in where mm. it matters. Correct, correct. So I think there's something that Singapore actually has to learn for a long time really because mm. um, especially in animation, so I'm an animator, right, by, by training. I mean, animation, animation is a very labor-intensive job. Mm. To just do one second of uh, movement, you, you typically need 24 frames. Mm, mm. So, Singapore is a bad place for labor, yeah, 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 right? Because cost of living is high. Yeah, correct, and yeah. we're also surrounded by highly populous mm, and very affordable uh, competitors. Talent. Yeah, 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 and talent. some of them are seriously very good. good. Yeah, yeah. Like disgustingly good for one-fifth of my price. Correct. How do I fight with that? Correct. So actually Singapore, even before AI has come around, I think Singaporeans have always had to play, especially in the animation space, right? You want to be the... How to say? My, my co-founder would say move up the value chain, mm, which mm. means that you want to do the work that is paid more mm. that less people can do. Ah, yes. So right, in the animation right, right. part, it might be I'm the script writer, I'm the director, mm. or I'm the storyboard artist, or I'm the... Uh, Con- the lead concept. Uh, yeah, or, or lead, DOP. Like yeah, yeah, right, instead right. of the person that actually yeah, churns yeah, it. Right. Even though I might love the churn, and mm. I also respect the churn, and the mastery of the churn is something that appeals to me. For the business and for my craft, I might actually need to mm-hmm. pick my battles. Uh. That's true. So I think mm-hmm. that's super important. So with the AI thing, I don't know, like... I'm not, I don't feel that threatened right now yet. Nah, because I feel like if it replaces that aspect, then because I'm a business owner, I can then mm. use it. Mm, to enhance your workflow. Yeah, but yeah. as much as possible, I would still like to employ other good people mm. to also preserve it. Mm. But I tell you, if AI comes knocking on our doorstep in such a credible way, I will have to, as a creative business owner, switch off the creative and be a business owner first. Correct. That is my priority and, and I'm not, I guess, proud to say it, but I'm not ashamed of all. Mm. Because in my perspective, for my personal story, I feel like money has kept me safe from that. Mm. Mm. It gives me the float to then try and make longer play stuff, mm. something you were talking about before. Yes, right? correct. Longer play stuff that might not work right now, right now, but lets me build something that might work later. That's what money can do for me. So it's not like I want to be creatively the best to make a lot of money, but mm. the money sometimes can give you the float to the, the, the runway yeah. as they put it and that took me an embarrassingly long time to realise because I remember in uni I was like so opposed to the idea of um, selling up really? yes I told myself in year 3 uh, this is like animation year 3 uh, my dream was to be an animator in uh, Ghibli Studios or Ghibli I don't know which one oh the, the very the credible uh, incre- uh, I mean yeah, this yeah, is just yeah. incredible yeah. stuff the, like, world leaders, the world leaders the world leaders yeah the yeah, best yeah, la, yeah. right Correct. probably one of the great living animation directors right? I, I said I want to work there and uh if I can say earn three thousand dollars a month You'll and be, be an animator, I'll be happy for the rest of my life. Then I came out, I realized, what wow, the mortgage alone yeah, is this yeah. amount. <laughs> if I want to buy this, is this? It's, it's not looking good, right? Yeah. Like, hmm, we choose this. This not looking good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so reality slapped yeah, yeah. me very hard, no? yeah. and then I quickly had to adjust. Yeah, true, true. And I think if if you got rich dad or rich parents, great, great, I'm so yeah. happy for you. Please pursue it. Yeah, yeah. But then don't judge me also when I sell. And, and they don't. My, yeah, I'm also yeah. afraid my friends would judge me because I, no one judges. Yeah, I had to do some jobs that I, I guess were not on the top of my list in terms of passion. Mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't hate them also. Yeah, I grew yeah, to yeah. be interested. I, I did med tech. Mm. I was in mothership for a while. So mm. I learned so much there and it was fun too. But it took me a while to shake myself loose of like, I told myself once, the I think. Programming. In, in, yes, in year three, right, I told yeah. myself like, if I was not going to do animation right for a living, I might as well kill myself. And I didn't tell myself <laughs> this in a depressive way. It's yeah, not yeah, depressive. Yeah. It's not. It's like a pride thing. It was like this uh, is me. This is my enlightened being. This is my identity. Thing, right? yeah, 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 yeah. You're not gonna take this away from me. That yeah. kind of thing. But actually, I I now like that my identity is evolved. more of yeah evolved. Yeah. I'm a creative business owner. I, I created a structure by which we can express something creative and useful for the world, and that's pretty damn okay also lah. I'm not working in Ghibli, but not bad. Lah. And I guess that that's actually the ironic thing, right? Because the mm. more you delve into being a cre- creative business owner and building your own float, mm. the more you have the chance to actually try other things. Because if you work for a big corporation like IAM or, you know, yeah, the, yeah. you actually yeah. don't end up doing anything. Uh, you become super specialized yeah, correct, in one correct, thing. Correct, like. correct. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing also, but, but I'm thinking to the fact that because in Singapore, ILM recently 
basically just close shop here and move. Mm. So if you're somebody that's been working there for say eight years and you do nothing but let's say just one thing which is like, I don't know, crowd simulation or hair yeah, simulation yeah, right, and that's right. all you know how to do. Yeah. If ILM moves out and that's all you've known, are there many places in Singapore that can that need yeah, somebody who can just do hair at an extremely high level? I don't think got a lot. Mm. So the idea of being adaptable also, like you said, means I think being exposed to a lot of different mm. things, trying and failing a lot of different things. I think mm. that's very important also. What were the factors that contributed to you deciding to go into your business full-time? Also, actually, there were three considerations and they're all money. Because I, I'm somebody who, I mean, my family is all in Malaysia. So in Singapore, the exchange rate convert to Malaysia is it's like, yeah. it's very good, but the other way is bad. So I always feel very bad about taking money from my parents who mm. live and then work yeah, in the Malaysia. Work, yeah. Because it's three times there. So uh, when I graduated, I had a $25,000 uni grab, uh, uni debt. Mm. Sorry, yeah. This was my NTU debt. Nah. Mm. I had to pay that off. Uh, so money was very present on my mind. Call because the line. Yeah, to even be here in Singapore, I had to rent also. I lived with my mm. aunt for a while, but then later on, I rented by myself. And I rented in some pretty shitty places for very, very little money. Mm. I remember my, the first place I rented out was in Wampo. It was at the basement of this uh, HDB block, right? And it was at the back of a spectacle shop. Wow. It's an illegal thing. He's is not it, supposed to rent out yeah, this back yeah, area. Yeah. Rented it out. It's about 350 a month back then. Wow. There were cockroaches, no aircon, uh, no hot water. I had to boil hot water myself, pour into the tub there. there. Wow, that's so, extreme. No laundry yeah, yeah, machine. Yeah. I had to give the, the uncle the, yeah. who owned the spectacle shop my clothes in a basket. He would take it home to wash and he'd bring it the next day. Wow. So he also has to yeah, yeah. right? So, so... But I was so happy. No internet access. I was so happy. I, 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 with my first salary, which was 1.6k, I was a junior web designer, right? I bought a PS2 and I just played like Fight Night and GTA. Wow. That was the best time. Good of my times. Life. Yeah, yeah, so good time. Talking about cockroach businesses, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, it's literally cockroach because like last night, there were cockroaches in my room. <laughs> and I, I got used to it. Yeah. You, you, got, you live, you were... I live with them. I was born in it. More yes. than by it. I was one of them. I didn't see non-cockroach till I was a man. In fact, right? In fact, it's so interesting about that blog. I remember very vividly, like, about 2 or, two or 3 a.m., right? Almost every night, right? There'll be these very nice supercars that will come and park because you know it's it's a HDB. Oh yeah, the one the, the yeah. The, so the they will come and park these beautiful supercars, right? And I don't know what's happening still to this day. Maybe more streetwise people can tell me what's happening. But like I will see scantily clad, like beautiful European girls, right? Get out of one car to go in another car, then they could drive home again. And this happened almost every From time. From one car to the other. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's in Wampo, which is this like a lot of senior citizen one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So by day, you just see nice uncle auntie walking around. And yeah. by night, there's this kind of cockroachy thing going on. This yeah, kind of shady yeah. stuff. Very interesting, you know. Wow. So that's the, the one of the crucibles in which I was born out of. Like, you know, so it's important for me to to really live like a cockroach, I guess. Yeah, live like a cockroach. Long live the cockroaches. Yeah. Uh, not not, Actually, not those in our houses. La, you asked me yeah, something else, but I forgot. What was it? Okay, so um, what was uh, one of the reasons, maybe non-monetarily, that you decided to embark on your own business? Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Okay, yeah. 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 So it's always been more than my money. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. Uh, I had this desperation and this, this I feel like this ball chain to my mm-hmm. money. So... When I was thinking about starting a company or quitting my job to go mm. full-time at the work salary, man, I had three check boxes that I needed ticked. And I wrote this down. I, I calmed my nerves down and I wrote it down because I'm somebody who is very risk-averse. So mm. I know that I would chicken out if it comes to a point where actually I it, should quit. Oh, yeah. So okay. I wrote down these three check, points and I, check boxes and I told myself that if these three check boxes were all ticked, uh, I must quit to do work salary full time. Oh. So here are the three, right? The first one is that I have to first pay off my 25k debt. Mm. Second one is that uh I had to have in savings, liquid savings, six months of my salary. Uh, at the okay. time it was about 6k because I was working mm-hmm. in this med tech job. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. I felt like I was selling out. The, the, the more marketing money. job. Yeah. Right, so yeah. I needed 36k in yeah, savings. Okay. I needed to pay off 25k. And the last one was that work salary man, which was a side hustle at the time would have to, in a row, uh, three months in a row, right, make at least 6K for each, me and my uh, co-founder. Each, each founder, right? Yeah, yeah so yeah, I needed yeah, a right, runway. Right, right. So if you think about it like a plane, right, what I needed was, uh, first off, to shed excess weight. So mm. this is the depth, mm-hmm. right? The second one was to really streamline the the, the machine mm. to make it so that uh, there's, it, oh no, uh, store fuel. Store fuel. To have enough <laughs> fuel to go. And then the, the, next, the last one was to build a runway. No? You see, that's like, Literally one work salary man comic book, 
already. Comic strip. We, we did one yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, we did yeah, do yeah, it. We did do it. Yeah. Maybe we we refresh it. Yeah. And and this I I guess it's not a very sexy story because it's not like. I threw caution to the yeah, wind he, and I just jumped. He was jumped. granted Forbes 30 under 30. Well, no. Actually, that one like, now like a curse land because yeah. everybody... Like, <laughs> Interestingly so. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But back then, it was not like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, this is, I, I guess, the humpty way to start a business. Uh, okay, okay. The I would say, if you are scared of starting a business, just try to ch- check these three things. So, guys, it... In, in essence, the Woke Salary Man's Guide to the humpty way the to humpty, start, yeah. start a business. Right? Yeah, the humpty <laughs> guide to starting a business. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and kiss you alive, man. Kiss you alive, right? <laughs> because like, here's the thing, like, it would kill me, right? Like, if if we started it without any savings, without mm. any caution, without any safety net, and then let's say we run it for five months mm. and we have to quit, right? Mm. I will be haunted by yeah, the thought. Yeah, that's hey, true, what that's if true. it would have made it in the six months? Yeah, this is like the cafe that closed after they spent all on renovation or something. Like that. Yeah, yeah so, right, hey, right, cafe right. brutal, yeah. Yeah, yeah, cafe. The, the margins <laughs> are brutal. That's why I, I love the episode you did with the, the NBCB dude. Ah, uh, oh. yes, yes. Because that Tommy, is a Tommy, brutal yeah, ass yeah, business. Yeah. F&B, yeah. hardcore. Brutal, man. Hardcore. Yeah. But I guess nowadays you see increasingly right people that do very traditional businesses that are able to sustain and still keep their brand going the founder seems to be very prominent doing a lot of content so as a person running a professional content house what is your view on this do do you think businesses need to be at the forefront of creating content for themselves so so meaning like a personal branding is it like Uh, either as a company or as a, a business to bring the you know, the the community in or the customers. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know. Like, actually, because it can be a good and a bad thing and mm. depend on how you play. And some people don't like to be in front of camera. They mm. don't like to represent the company. Mm. So for us, in a way, it's good because the whole segment is a cartoon. Yeah, <laughs> it's the cartoon yeah. character. For me to express myself, I can draw the damn thing. Yeah. Then sometimes we... We have a podcast now on the work segment. Then mm. we appear yes. on it and yes. we don't kind of push ourselves too much. Like... Mm-mm. On work segment, you rarely see us tag our own account. Mm. And I also don't know what to think about it. I don't know whether I should be more active with my personal branding. Ah, oh, I get what you mean. But yeah. actually, it's nice to not be known. Mm, mm, mm. Because imagine if we are very front-facing on the work segment and we have, right now we have about 400k on IG. Mm. Uh, then TikTok also, I think 400k. Facebook about 400k also. I don't know why all is 400k, but... Um, if we are so front facing and four hundred k people are to us, it will be very hard to go out. I think. Yeah, like. they'll they like you pushing your groceries in yeah, NTC, like, right? They like, hey, look, the guy he don't practice what he yes. preach. He's splurging yes. on like a uh, a premium. Yeah, he buys stupid shit. Yeah, yeah. he buy twenty six dollar fruits. Yeah. <laughs> like, I would like to be human. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a human, so I always tell people. <laughs> people refer to us as the work segment. I don't know, no, we are yeah, not no, the no, work segment. Yeah, <laughs> the work segment is an ideal yeah, yeah, that okay, we okay. also strive to, and we are flawed people. I buy stupid shit all the time, yeah, and yeah. I'll be horrified yeah. if people knew who I was at all times. I cannot do the stupid things that I do. Uh, I true, true. It's not that I litter or what la, but yeah. I do buy stupid things that are like, hmm, this would be cool. Yeah, at the end of the day, we are all human, yeah, and yeah, we yeah. need to uh, live and enjoy. Yeah. yeah, but I, I guess the the whole work salary man uh, philosophy and why I think it uh, triggered and both delighted the audience in Singapore is that money is something that in the Asian culture people don't like to attack head on, right? They yeah. don't like to have the blunt, Absolutely. tough questions when it comes to that, right? Yeah. They say, they're right. like they will say, uh, how much do you want to make? Then they are like, oh, maybe around yeah, here. They walk around. Yeah, 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 right, they walk right, around. Right. And then yeah. it solves nothing, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's good to have a platform that kind of addresses it. Like sometimes we have contributor stories, and I think that's great. Mm. But but this this money thing is real, like like in terms of how Asian cultures find it hard to talk about. And I actually not that I don't under, I understand why, but I feel like we need to attack it more mm. and need to be more transparent. So whenever I talk to young people, especially because I I also teach now at the art school that I was from, which is NTU mm. right? I try to be as transparent as I can about the money that I earn because mm. I remember very vividly when I was still a student, my seniors would tell me when I was doing freelance projects at school, right? They would say, hey, bro, don't spoil the market. Lah. You must charge properly. Then I'll ask them, how much do you charge? And they won't tell me. Yeah, yeah, that's like how. Then how do I not spoil the market, bro? Yeah, you tell yeah. me the price. But I understand why also, right? Yeah, because yeah. there's a, it's, it's so much fear wrapped up in yeah, it. Like yeah, if I yeah. tell you my rate, then it's like, wow, this kind of thing also, you so lousy, you also can get 6K. Uh, there's yeah, so yeah, much yeah, right? yeah, the slow so, judgment and yeah I try as it. best as I can uh, to be the senior that I needed mm. but also I can't say everything yeah yeah right so 
Like I'll tell people my take home pay now is 7k. Mm. That's the that's the pay that the company pay. Correct, me. correct. And I think saying this also might make my co founder yeah, uncomfortable. You, you, you might trigger some but then also got bonuses. Or sometimes yeah, yeah, we don't yeah, take yeah, bonuses. Correct, or sometimes correct. we give back money to the company. Yeah. And that makes it complex. But I try correct. to be as transparent as possible. Mm. And this this thing comes into play when it comes to like pay transparency, wish transparency in the same workplace as well. Mm. It's very difficult to share because yeah, you've got yeah. office politics. Yeah, got yeah. departmental why politics. Pay, why they pay more? Yeah. Kind of thing, why do right? you get paid more? Maybe it's some other factor. Yeah, yeah. You don't know. You know? Maybe yeah, they right, negotiate. Right. Yeah. Or they market themselves better. Yeah. But I always feel maybe it's very un-Asian to me. I think it's better if it's out there. So maybe it, really, it can you, be you anonymous. That, that, yeah. yeah. There's a page now called Malaysian Pay Wish Gap. Wow, phenomenal page. Malaysian Pay, pay Wish Gap. Wish and what gap. they do oh, is brilliant. Wow. It's an it's a anonymous thing, right? So you can write a message to them and say, I work as a this, this, this pharmaceutical assistant location at Selangor KL. My money pay is this. And they will, every week, they will delete your... your, your. Oh, really? So they, anonym, they they put so much effort into anonymizing it. And it means that the industries become so transparent in terms wow, of wages. Wow, wow, wow. I think this is very needed. Especially in creative space, right? Yeah, yeah. Like the, the idea of blacklisting uh, 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 yeah, clients yeah. that are abusive. And I've had a lot of them, okay? A lot of people yeah, try yeah. to take advantage of me. Yeah. And my wife, who I also have worked on with wow, the creative wow, okay, projects. Okay. And people always want to black, blacklist people, blacklist that. But you ask them, who is this guy? They, they won't say. They, they, don't they say, say, you can't right? talk to me privately. Yeah, yeah. And I understand why. So it's yeah, such yeah. a small industry. Yeah, you yeah. don't want to be the person that blacklisted. Correct, correct. So this kind of transparency thing, well, I think it really has to be pushed further. Mm, mm, and sometimes mm. the thing that you can do to help push it further is to create a page just like, say, Malaysian Pay Wish Gap. Mm. To, to use IG as a way uh, of, of anonymizing this stuff, mm, I think mm, it's just mm. phenomenal. I would love if that's done in Singapore more. Mm. So my little bit that I can do is I'll tell people my salary. <laughs> First salary was 1.6. Then uh, That's, you've, come MS, a long way. you've come a long way. Yeah, 4K, 6 k I'll seven. tell everybody yeah, that whole yeah. journey. Wow, wow. And, yeah. and a lot of people that hear this, they might be very triggered or inspired yeah. of your voyage from 1.6K all the way to 7K where you are yeah. now. So yeah. what would you say to, to these people? That they, they feel like, uh, you know, it's your... It seems unfair. It's not a linear thing. Like, yeah. And it's not a, a thing that you will know. Like, I remember when I was making, wow, my, my, my first salary negotiation was such a fucking disaster because I didn't even look it up. Uh, basically, I just fresh grad from poly and I just wanted a job. So, ah, sure, I, sure, sure. I was a junior web designer. Mm. Then after that, I went to ADM, mm. right? Mm. So, I, I still remember it clear as day. I remember I, I go in, I didn't research my salary or anything. Then I say, uh, the, the guy say, oh, you seem good for the role. Like, what would be your starting salary that you want? I said, I don't know, maybe something like 800. Then he laughed. Yeah, and he yeah. said, actually, we start at about 1.5 for diploma. Yeah, yeah. Then, I, then he gave me 1.6. Yeah, yeah. You know? so because you really didn't know. I really didn't know. Nobody tell me these things. Like, like I'm, I'm surprised at the lack of education I had from, oh, okay, from okay, school. Okay, okay. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess it's not fair to, mm, mm, mm. to put this on them. You know? And now mm. they're doing better. Mm. So like this kind of transparency is so important mm, in terms mm. of like keeping the market. And also like in terms of revealing your salary, right? I remember a story I did about how I tackled my 25k uni debt, right? And then uh, I, I told them, I wrote in the story for sake of convenience uh, that my starting pay was 4k because that was my starting pay. Like mm. when I graduated ADM mm, mm, and I didn't mm. just do ADM bachelor's, I got a master's there also. I stayed another two years to do a master's. Wow. wow. So I had a master's degree. Yeah. So I just wrote that my starting salary is 4k. But actually my real starting salary is 1.6k. That's my yeah, first job. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it would be so difficult to explain yeah, this in an Instagram okay. or Facebook yeah, context. Yeah. Ma. So I just streamlined it. Wow, and then so many people just got stuck on the fact that I earn 4k. Yeah, then and they then they're just like, right, ah, yeah, yeah, you yeah. easy lah, bro. You earn 4k, I also can. Yeah, yeah. But that's not I how I started can. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And if I would tell you the whole spiel of yeah. how I got the, to 4k. The, the cockroaches in Wampo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Maybe yeah. I'll write there a story yeah. one day. How many of you are living in a room with cockroaches? Raise your hands. Maybe some people are. Actually, right. Singapore very little. I don't know yeah. You live second story yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, people get so caught up on just the number figure yeah. that I also have become more cautious about just oh, being too transparent yeah, yeah. because it can get in the way. Mm, and mm, also yeah. actually, it's interesting how you can sometimes use the, the number figure as a way to get people's attention. Yes, that's true. Because I realized that I tried speaking to say secondary school kids and you can't, I, I suck at speaking to young kids because I can't grab them by because they have no mm, notion yeah, of money. Yeah, correct, correct. So actually one of my friends was like, actually maybe what you want to do is tell them how much you earn. <laughs> Ah. As a way to grab their attention. Yeah, then they're like, wow. So, yeah, so everything is contextual. 7K, bro. Then yeah. to them at a secondary school level, they are thinking like, yes. you know, how many Pokemon card packets can I open? Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, must yeah. make it into something they can That's understand. a fortune. <laughs> yeah. So that's storytelling, yeah, right? Yeah. And that's something I've learned about storytelling. Mm. That the context that you set it up, 
what's your purpose? If my purpose is there, really, maybe the 4K says softer or put a context mm. there. So I also blame myself a bit for not understanding how people mm. take the message. The nuances of the delivery. Of a money yeah. discussion, yeah, even on a public platform, in an Asian first platform, mm. there are nuances there that you can and cannot do differently with, say, Western platforms. Mm. Very interesting. Uh. That's yeah. true. So if um, the work salary man as a company, if you y'all were to develop a financial product, I mean, there are many financial products in the market. What is one product you all feel or you personally feel is severely needed in Singapore or in Asia? Oh, it's tough uh, because uh, for us to make something, like I would love to be able to do something that is an original product. So mm. I would love insurance, for example. Mm. And I'm not an expert. So this is just me like talking on my ass, uh, right? Mm. Because I'm not the financial expert here mm. and probably will we'll partner with an expert to, to make the thing. I would love uh, a very low margin insurance product that oh, just oh, works okay. and then it is sustainable. Mm. In terms of the, the fund will cover itself ah, okay. very minimally. Then maybe we get but a little bit of extra ah. profit on top. But, but it's just engineered purely for, for because user, people trust our brand. The end yeah. user. Yeah, so yeah. people trust our brand and we say, Low if you fees. don't know what to get, yeah. get this. Yeah. We're not earning right. much from right. it, right. but you just get. But I'm sure the market also got this kind of product. Mm-hmm. But the insurance, the insurance market, from what I can understand it as a layman, is extremely diverse and very, very complex. And yeah, there yeah. Are it's many very, types really of hard to understand what's really going on. In many different ways yeah. to to attack from many yeah, different correct, So correct. probably got covered already. Mm. There are probably these, these products. They are like top funnel products yeah, correct, correct. that have very low margin. Then there are lower, yeah, which is like more, lesser people use, mm. but the margin is higher. Yes. And that's a good reason. Yes. Another one I would love to is investing. But investing, actually, there's already a product out there, which is your S&P 500. Yeah, yeah, correct, or your uh, ETF. Uh, ETF, yeah, yeah, your, your world in next one. That one will cover it. So right now, not much that I can think mm, of mm. apart from these two. Or maybe something more like, uh, like, like, wow, but the... Compliance and all that would be a nightmare. Like like personal accident that kind of thing. Ah, okay, or travel okay. insurance that kind of thing. I would love that, but the complexities of making that is, yeah. is not in my pay grade one. What about uh information products like uh, courses or seminars or workshops? So we've done some. Actually the original mm-hmm. business model for Oaks I mean, that we want to do was actually workshops. Ah, okay. We wanted to actually a bit similar to what you're doing right now with this thing. Yes. Which is that we want to build a consultancy slash training business about social media. Ah, okay, okay. And then we wanna help brands make stuff on social media. Mm, mm. The work salary man was supposed to be a portfolio piece to say, ah, that if we, we can, do. can make personal finance interesting enough to a point where we have 25,000 followers on Facebook, we know what we're talking about. Mm. Then it grew into its own thing and sponsored content became a better way mm, that we, we More direct. Yeah, 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 because the, the problem with workshops and, and training is that you do it yourself, it is so tiring. Mm. You have to do the same thing many, many times many for a small audience. Yeah, yeah. And that could be fun for you if you're interested in that. Um, and we've done a few. Mm. Uh, but then things like a masterclass online, that kind of thing. Maybe, mm. la, maybe. Mm. So the closest to that that we've done now is our book. La. So we just released a book. Uh, it is something that is for beginners. La. Mm. You know, then, then it's a collection of our comics. And then it takes you through the, the mindset of why is first of all money important. Mm. Then now that you realize money is important, how do you go about improving your earning thing? Then Correct. eventually investing in things like that. Mm. So the book is something that we prefer as that model because if it's an online course where uh, you do this kind of funnel business where you mm. talk funnel, then you give a lot of people like very, very good uh, general seminars for free, then you come yes, deeper yes, if you want yes, right. I'm not sure if we want to do that. Mm. It's just something we're not interested in mm. right now. Yeah, That's true. Um, for you, if you could create any uh, non-finance related yeah. uh, business, yeah. Or product that you like, what would you do? Well, so many. I got so many ideas so many. that I want to do because yeah. it's sort of related to a question about like um, putting ourselves out there, yeah. like like not just the works I remember, but Wei Chun and my co-founder Remy. Yes. Who are we, right? Mm-hmm. So he has his own like zone of interest that is beyond. Because when you work on this thing and you become known for this thing, it it actually can be a bit of an identity thing where it's like, is this me now? Mm-hmm. And it's not really. Yes, like, I think true. it's it's a part of me, a big part of me, and I love that it's part of me. It is like a baby that I created with somebody else, which is my co-founder, right? Um, but I also have another thing that I want to do, you know? But the always thing, the thing that comes down to it is, is money. La. Yeah. And I haven't come down to it. So maybe if the work time man was to go bankrupt next year or this year or what? Touch wood, touch wood, guys. No, we say it all the time. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> you say all the time. We say five years <laughs> when it still <laughs> happened. I'll touch anyway, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. um, 
that I would love to do something about uh, mental health and mm, also mm. particularly about vulnerability as a, as a dude, as a man. Ah, okay, wow. I think not, not enough of that is said and I don't think mm. I got that enough from the male role models in my dad, ah, in my, okay, in my okay. life because my dad was not around for that kind of mm. teaching. Mm. I had to learn a lot of that myself and I think it's particularly hard for, for Asian dudes to ah, be vulnerable okay, okay. and that's the sort of strength that I think is, is lacking. Oh. The idea that um, it's okay to cry, it's okay to, to, to say that something is making you sad uh, mm. There's this saying in Chinese which is uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 like, yeah. which is like a man would bleed first before he cries. Yeah, yeah. Don't be a pussy. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. And all that, that stuff, Chinese. right? But I think actually right now as of this time that there's great uh, There are a lot of utility. guys bleeding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're bleeding. Uh, you're actually going to cry. So it's okay. Just cry. Don't bleed, right? Another one is like mental health and things. I would love to do like a, a, a platform where it's like a children's storybook but for adults about mm, things like adulting mm, about grief yeah, yeah. Uh, like one of my favourite comics that I ever did for my own my own self was when my hamster died I was very sad wow. and, I, and I drew a comic about grief and I, and I looked up some uh, some studies about how grief works and it's a popular thing that's out there so I didn't come out of it but this idea that for example um, grief is like a black spot in your heart and then what people think getting over it is that the black spot get the, the black spot gets smaller and smaller, but it's not that. It's mm. that your heart gets bigger around it. Wow. So that the grief is still the same size, but your capacity to, to love handle it yeah. and to handle it becomes more. That's so, true. So actually when something that you love dies, somebody that love, a business, a pet, your your loved one. In a way, it's also training. But mm. you need to get mm. through that process oh. of making your heart and, bigger. And it will be better on the other side. And it will make you more capable of loving and mm. giving yourself. Your capacity will, yeah. will increase. Because you yeah. know that with this hurt comes good stuff so you won't avoid it. And mm. when you're avoidant, this is somebody that I need, I'm very avoidant when it comes to expressing myself. That's why I'm attacking it so hard. Oh. This is something that I never learned, you know. And my wife had to put out a lot of nonsense for me because I wow. don't know how to emotionally express myself. So that's something that really? I love to do. Yeah. I, 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 I'm getting better at it and I try very hard but my natural cause of action when there's any kind of emotional conflict is avoid. Mm. I will lock myself up and I don't talk about it. And I will just be myself and I'll, I'll process the poison myself and shit it out later. <laughs> process the poison yourself. Yeah, that's how right, I am. Right. That's how wow, I am. wow. And um, why do you think, not, not just yourself, but some of our previous uh, guests and increasingly there's this whole conversation around like mental health, men's mental health and general psychological well-being. Why, why do you think in the last few years this has become such a prominent uh, topic? I don't know why it has become prominent. Maybe it's in the cause of like the maturing of social media when, mm, mm. when you run out of things. Because last time the, the, the meta and I'm sure you know this yeah. like, the landscape of social media has changed so much. Like I remember like five years ago it was like listicle you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That, that, that. I thought five this and that you know the, the five types of aunties yeah, or uncle yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. then um, it will change the yeah, right, so maybe right, this right. is the maturing like I remember when IG first came around, there was things like planking and tech yeah, yeah, and yeah, stuff, yeah. you know? Okay, 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 then okay. The, the platform will mature. Like how, for example, everybody says that Facebook has matured and Facebook is dying. Facebook's not dying. Facebook's very strong. A lot of people are using yeah, Facebook. Make it's still, no mistake, guys. It's still the most <laughs> yeah, used. Yeah. It's just that the demographic shifts right, old. Right. It, it, but old, it's not bad also. Yeah, they, they, go into, they go into groups. Yeah. yeah. The groups are very, very, very active. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. my game stuff are... The groups, I'm so crazy, active on groups. Uh, crazy, like, crazy. Found this new weapon, what's the meta, how to use, okay. what's the deployment rate, what's the yeah, cooldown, yeah, whatever. Okay, okay. Everything I do on Facebook now, actually, maybe I'm old. Right? Yeah, yeah. But aging population, we're all old. We're all gonna... So it's okay. And man. for all of you young people out there, you get here one day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this mental health thing, interestingly, I, I think it is maybe an idea of like, we are, as a society, we explore these channels. Mm. Like, the idea that social media has a bit of a anonymity to it because you don't necessarily mm-hmm. need to show your face to post something uh, the the expanding of our, our ability to broadcast I, that's mm-hmm. what I love about social media social media in my mind I think the best thing about it is that it has commoditized and made so cheap uh, the idea of publishing something mm-hmm. before social media if you wanted to have something that could potentially be exposed to thousands of people don't even say millions right you have to get on broadcast yes, yes you have yes, to yes, be yeah. in with like Mediacorp or, yeah, yeah. You know, or CNN or STC whatever or whatever yeah, yeah. Else, right and SPH and whatnot. But now, everybody, and this is a quote from Penn North, so I'm, I'm lifting it. Everybody with a mobile phone and internet connection has all the tools they need to create something. He, he said Citizen Kane. Citizen he said yeah, everybody yeah, with yeah. a mobile phone, yeah. this is enough power to film, film Citizen stuff, Kane. Right, yeah. So, now it has become so that everybody can access the mm-hmm. internet. 
and you get some dark side like Kurt Day that kind yeah. you know which is I'm, I'm very fascinated by but then also it means that I can be vulnerable I can write mm-hmm. a thousand word thing and if it does well millions of people around the world yeah. can see and I don't need to pay anyone I don't need to pay network fees to anybody to mm. distribute it that's the beauty of social media yeah. and having been in this uh, <coughs> digital media space for so long right where do you see the future going not not being uh, no pressure of making like a final judgment but your own personal opinion what is what I don't know eh? yeah I really don't know because uh, I feel like um, the creation is not the hard part. It's always the monetization. I think mm, everything mm, on social media, if you want to make a page on social media, sustainable, uh, mm, there's, there's three steps. First one is you create the thing. Can you create it steadily? Second one is does it go viral? Do people mm, see it? And mm. third one is can you make money from it? <laughs> and the failure point I see a lot of people it's, get caught up it's on. It's the money. It's 2.5. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's very run, hard. Run out of... Uh, <laughs> very hard. Because run out of like, juice. I've made stuff that went viral before, like little jokes, like posts. Like I, I remember I, I did one post before just for fun. This is something I used to do with my secondary school friends. Like we convert, directly translate things. So for example, we did one, I did one wrestling. So the wrestler Undertaker, I mm. put Xia Mian Oh, the, yeah. the, the rock, the rock is <laughs> Naka Right. Then I did one for bands, like Coldplay is I the, saw one of these the before. Yeah, 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 you yeah, know, yeah. McFly is uh, Chang Ying Han Bao. Oh, right. Okay, okay, okay. That went viral. Then I'm like, okay, like, I think like perfect 10 shared it. And I'm like, okay, what happens now? Do I start making money? Yeah, the answer yeah. is no. That's a slow, right? Yeah, actually, <laughs> variety don't mean anything now. Yeah, like, it okay, means correct. it could be the spark, yeah, yeah. but a spark is not enough. You need kindling, you need fuel. Correct, correct. So, figuring that part out, I think, is the, the interesting bit. So, when it comes to the future of social media, I think the expression part, the creation part, I'm not that concerned about. And I don't mm. think too much because people... Like when TikTok came around, there's so many surprising ways that people start creating stuff mm, mm, mm. that has taken the industry completely opposite. Yes, like right yes. now, I see so much about filming where, um, like like on Reels and TikTok, if you overproduce something, uh, actually it's to the detriment yeah, of the thing. Correct, correct. You know, it doesn't feel authentic correct, anymore. Correct, correct. So that has changed the landscape. You know, like like what what is a corporate video? Is yeah. it something that looks that beautiful? very polished? Right, yeah, has right, a yeah, step yeah, of feel yeah, okay? Correct, you know, yeah. or is it better for and you see companies doing it like Duolingo Duolingo mm. has mastered TikTok wow, but Duolingo is a, a corporate beast, level. You know, yeah, beast yeah, right yeah, yeah. Beast, yeah. it's a monster because they understand that crazy, man. authenticity yeah. and, and not say low production value but but the quicker way yeah, the publication yeah, correct, is correct, actually correct. fast turnaround so maybe sometimes the, the way to actually shoot a corporate video is actually better if you just sit your employee down maybe put some nicer lighting mm. then just film with your phone mm. let's get mm. uh, just go like that vertical, no, sorry, vertical, uh, portrait vertical, yeah portrait, yeah, portrait, yeah. yeah. Right, then you have a set, uh, you know, have all this. And these are important jobs too that I respect, you know, mm-hmm. production crew and whatnot, you know. But so, then maybe it'll just be about monetization. Mm-hmm. How will things monetize? Like we were talking about Prime earlier. Mm-hmm. Maybe that that model will come in and change the way mm-hmm. that it's done. Mm-hmm. Because right now, it's not that comfortable. So like on YouTube, for example, we have revenue. Mm-hmm. And YouTube, I think quite quite good already because they share like 55%. Correct, right, right. that's everything. a very big uh, margin. I think quite good already. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you know, some creators still not getting it. Like, that's why Mr. Beast has to do what he does. Uh, yeah, yeah. Logan, Paul, uh, Paul and uh, KSI has to do yeah, Prime. Yeah. So maybe that new monetization model would change the way. Mm-hmm. Because right now, how we monetize is that we use uh, sponsor content. Mm. What sponsor content basically means, right, is that instead of you paying us mm. as a viewer to consume, yeah. a sponsor has paid it so correct, you don't correct. need to pay us. Correct, so correct, we correct, have correct. money to keep making the thing. And to make the thing that people love to consume, yeah. right? And there's yeah. always some uncomfortability yeah, there yeah, in yeah, terms correct, of correct. like subliminal, not subliminal, like um, they used to call it something else. They used to call it like, uh, this is not sponsor content uh, native advertising. Ah, uh, that's a rare old word. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it used to be like, you read yeah, article halfway, yeah, hey, what the uh, fuck yeah, is sponsored? Yeah, what yeah, the yeah, hell? Yeah, so now, we declare at the start. Yeah. Then okay. at the start, like, then like, now YouTube, the meta is that if I do an ad read, yeah, yeah. it is okay. Yeah, it's like, okay. People yeah. don't go, hey, they, what the fuck? Because they know the, the, the guy need to earn money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then some they'll complain also. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, yeah. I also skip. Uh, Sometimes. And especially if the brand that they are advertising is too far from what they're known for. Yes, right, right, yeah. right, right, right. Like you talk about basketball, then there's then some underwear you, you, you commercial. Suddenly crypto.com. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No fit, right? FTX. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No fit, right? Yeah, that's true, that's true. But sometimes I like it also, like, because you see her and then how creatively they uh, how they, they, how they craft it. the message into yeah. the video, right? But I watch a lot of basketball videos. Then yeah. got this this one guy called B-Bob Brick now. He's a coach, like. Mm. He, I, I love his ad reads because he tried to hide it. Ah. He'll say like, LeBron James is scoring well and it's maybe because his nether regions are well protected which leads me to my sponsor. Which <laughs> yeah, is then you're like, whoa. I was like, Bro, like, respect. That, that's that's uh, sponsored content we want to see more yes, of, right? I like Because that. it's entertaining. Yes, right? yes. Yeah, yeah. There's value add for me. 
Right. So speaking of entertaining the audience value add, do you think why your current business has found its own niche is because previously the finance industry was like struggling to articulate uh, some of the messages they have to the masses? I think I think there's a lot of that because communication is a skill in itself. Mm. And then knowing about finance is a skill in itself. And personal finance are actually is not finance, it's not economic. It is finance for the masses. And that's mm. what I believe. Like, because that's what personal means. Is that I can take it home and I can apply it to my own individual thing. And because I'm not a corporation, I'm not a, a beast that has a board of directors, I am very singular and very focused with how I think. There are not so many considerations. Mm. So there's a lot of psychology comes into uh. it. A lot of mental health comes into it. So... You're right when it comes to, I think, part finance that there's a knowledge curse. If you know too much about it, you'll be very careful about dispensing. Yeah, like you're afraid advice. like what will compliance departments yeah. say and things yeah. like that. It's like being an right? academic. Yeah. Like, because you know the nuances of everything, you can't give a straight yes or no answer. Mm. But sometimes people want a straight yes or no. Mm-hmm. Even in the personal finance space, uh, so, sorry, in the social media space, honestly speaking, sometimes we do have to leap a little bit beyond our comfort zone in saying that just for the sake of this length of this article, here's what you need to know. A TLDR thing. Mm. When actually you should understand the whole nuance, but it's still better that you get a 0.5 version than a 0 version. Ah, but it's okay. great if you're going to read the whole one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But most people won't read the whole they, one. They don't have the, the patience for it There's nowadays. too much competition yeah, yeah, yeah. for right, attention. Right, right, right. It's attention economy. Yes. So what we try to do is that we, we value people's attention. If you choose to spend two minutes with us, we try to make sure that we don't waste your time. Yeah. And then we also get the sponsor in there, but we tell you beforehand if there's a sponsor. Mm, 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 that's mm. our kind of an ethical promise. Mm. So, yeah, that, that, that's, that's how we, we do it. What was the question? Sorry. It was about... No, it, it was about how um, you all have found the niche to, oh, niche, yes. to, to communicate this yes, uh, yes. Financial, complex financial stuff. Yeah, so it's all sort of knowledge curse. And oftentimes, great financial theorizers or thinkers might not necessarily be great communicators mm. and vice versa mm. like the problem with the creative scene a lot of times when it comes to personal finance is that a lot of us don't care about it mm, yeah. it's not a very sexy <laughs> yeah. thing for a school person to like hey have you thought about your savings and what you're going to yeah, do yeah, in the future that's just like, not be like yeah, right, if whatever. I have thinking about it I won't study art <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so this combination of things you know us yeah, being yeah. good communicators yeah, yeah, yeah. And then also we're interested in personal finance has made it so that this actually is a niche that not a lot of people have filled. Mm. But it's a different thing now. No? Nowadays, got a lot of people doing it. Mm. On TikTok true, also, there are people yeah, doing yeah. it in video form that... Quite finance talk or something yeah, like that, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So, I often talk to my co-founder and I say we're damn freaking lucky. Yes. Because if we... I think we have played a small part in also molding the scene to what mm. it is today locally. Yeah, it's locally, yeah. But then, you know, if we were to start with Oak Simon exactly as we started it back then, now, I don't think it would. It's harder, right? It's yeah, much, yeah, it's harder. much harder, harder. So many more options, you know. So, oh, really, we're damn lucky. Eh? Yeah. I, I cannot overstate how much luck has played in, mm-hmm. in terms of timing and how this worked out for us. But I guess also, uh, people also like to discount the hard work that goes into all this content. Because they, 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 they only see the final product. They see like, you know, uh, uh, for lack of a better term, a comic strip, right? Yeah. In layman's terms. Just draw only, yeah. man. It was so hard. Uh, uh, not like you're drawing like Optimus Prime. Yeah, or something just like that. Yeah, 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 naked yeah. people. Yeah, naked people. Who cannot like, draw? Like, right. yeah. 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 But actually, uh, can you, um, or can you share uh, some of the unseen struggles it takes to actually craft such a yeah. piece of content? So actually, that, that's a great point you make because I'll be the first to admit uh, that the art that we do at the works I is not top notch. Mm. It's not my top notch. It's not... Uh, it's not uh, Studio Ghibli. No. Not the it's not Goen even Goen Shun Tom Notch, you know? That aspires to Studio Ghibli. I, I can't <laughs> even be Studio Ghibli. I'm not even at that level as an artist. But luckily, I, I'm open-minded enough to be curious about a lot of things, including mm. personal finance. So I can carve out a small USP here mm. by combining two things mm-hmm. that people never combined before. Uh, but actually, the struggle is not with the technical execution. Mm. It's, it's, it is something more than that. It is the storytelling. Mm. It sounds fluffy and, yeah. and it is actually not. It is a very technical thing that I will spend all day talking about in terms of storytelling. Yeah, like, yeah. Do we choose a long kang for location or playing? Or what's the connotation of that? Uh, why is the shot here? It's, it's also quite cinematic. Mm-hmm. When you think about, uh, do we use over the shoulder? Mm-hmm. Who's on the left? Who's mm-hmm. on the right? Uh, do we read from the left to the right? Do we mm-hmm. use panels for this instead of just one yeah. big page? Because our, our standard format is text at the top, artwork in the middle, text at the bottom. Mm-hmm. But we've changed that around. Yes. 
Then nowadays, we're trying to go back to a more traditional style of storytelling where you have multiple panels, like a traditional mm. comic strip. Why do we do that? Is it because of the 10 panel restriction on IG? Mm. And then also then on the more abstract front in terms of storytelling, right? Why is the sensibility of the man on the street? Uh, how do we not get cancelled? That's a very real thing. Like. Mm. Because it's not, just not yeah, it's not just facts that will prevail, you know? Like, yeah. you have to be very sensitive to the emotions. What yeah. people are feeling at the moment. And we've made some errors before. We have made wrong calls before that mm. actually what we said was correct. I stand by it today. Mm-mm. But looking back, the timing was bad or the tone was bad. Mm-mm. The delivery. This is something yeah, that yeah. I don't think actually AI uh, can even do yet. Yeah, and I this is why we're safe, you know? Yeah. AI can churn 90% of my stuff, but the other 10% is not just like finishing it off. It's also the sensibility to understand, actually, this will be triggering. Take mm-hmm. this out. Mm-hmm. Or like, this one, maybe we want to trigger. Mm-hmm. Because triggering people will also get you that initial hook. Then they, they true, read it true. angrily. Yeah, yeah. Then in the middle, it's like, oh, it's really yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you know? <laughs> So that's something that we use sometimes as well. That's the hard part. That is the X factor that a lot of people don't understand yet. Mm-hmm. They think it's just you comic, yeah, you yeah. got finance, can already. No. Yeah. That's yeah. not it. It is also the choice of what lingo do we take up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I often play the role of a layman advocate. I'm quite stupid about this finance stuff. Huh? I'm the idiot. And it's useful because if I don't understand something, the chance of the average reader mm-hmm. understanding is much lower. So I'm the one that said, actually, I'm a bit too cheap. Can you yeah, explain yeah. this? Have a little breakout box and you explain this for me. I did not understand. Oh, true, true. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. The, that's the hard part. I, I like the, all the hacks, like the little breakout box. And yeah, like, yeah. Right, right. These are all visual storytelling yeah, devices yeah. that not just we use, filmmakers use, uh, the storybook people use, you know, the newspapers use. You just gotta find all these things to communicate as clearly as we can. Yeah. So speaking of firm and comics, at the end of the day, everything is a visual medium, right? Mm. So now with the latest Apple Vision Pro, <laughs> oh, yeah. what do you think the possibilities are for like creative storytelling? Well, I don't know about VR and AR yeah. stuff. Uh, I'm just an enjoyer of the thing. The I, I love, I love uh, VR gaming. Uh, but it's bad for the eyes. Like, it's so close. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Correct. But but the, the 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 meta one also, I think quite 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 yeah, scary. Yeah, right? Right, right. Like when they recreate yes, your face. Yes, uh, yes, yes. That one, the, the I, so, I saw the wow. podcast between Lex Friedman and Mark Zuckerberg. That one, it's wow, uncanny, like dude, yeah, like like, like it's particle based. Yeah. You know? So it's like having the yeah, person yeah. in front. Of you, it's right? like Zuck said. Uh, now you're not <laughs> laughing, right? That's all. Like, last yeah, time not so funny. Yeah, yeah. Not so funny, right? Yeah. Same with the yeah. You know they do this thing about the. The AI generated videos. Yeah, yeah, correct. Then correct, the Will Smith videos were getting. Yeah, but now it's like, oh. Fucking funny, right? Oh, and then it's like, suddenly, hey, hey, what the. Yeah, yeah. It's, get, it's thing. getting better and better. All the right? stock yeah, photo, yeah, like stock video correct, people, correct, like, correct, like correct. They're, they're sweating, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 The same with uh, script writing. I remember, like, this is something my, that my, my co founder showed me last night. Like, uh, they they use AI back then when it's not so good, right? To generate scripts for, like, uh, I think it might be either Carl Jr. or. Or Burger King. Ah, they yes, generate yeah, an ad. Yeah, yeah. The, a script. Then they shot it and used the words. Then it's very funny. Because yeah, like, yeah, the, yeah. the new yeah, burger. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. good. You know? yeah, yeah. And then in two years time. Oh, actually not, not funny already. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You can legit you do can them legit good do stuff. The you know? So like. Maybe. In the AI speed. I don't know. I would love to have. Book salary man. In an experiential form. But I also know that's not my lane. Mm-hmm. I, I'm actually quite. Old fashioned when it comes to these things. I always mm. like to. Stay in my lane. So people say like, oh, you do pop-ups, display this and that. But I'm like, is there any real f- yeah, function? Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Because sometimes I like uh, that something that, is that, traditional. Does it bring the message further, right? Yeah, yeah and yeah, if it's yeah, not correct, needed, correct. then don't, 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 don't <laughs> maybe do something else. Like, yeah, yeah. Like so, gaming, uh, you know, or, or porn. Well, <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah, yeah, what probably, will they will exploit uh, other, for? Other companies have a use for it uh, yeah. other than, than us. Uh. Yeah. So having, you know, uh, lived through all these technological advances, right? Uh, that that's what you know society always fears, right? Every tech advancement that comes, people yeah. are afraid of losing their jobs and things like that. Yeah. But I think throughout our, our conversation, we 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 are sort of reaching this point of understanding that if you don't at the core, if you don't like what you do, you won't even reach the level of excellence to worry about being replaced in the first place. Yeah. Correct. And if you don't like what you do and you succeed. Yeah. You also be miserable. Like, at least, <laughs> you succeed, yeah. At least yeah, as creatives, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, maybe yeah. I can see a version of myself where I was not able to do things that I like. Then mm. I say, I, then I just earn money. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's okay yeah, too. Yeah, that's I don't okay know. too. That's okay yeah, too. It depends on the person, you yeah, know. Yeah. yeah. But I guess uh, you have been on a journey of, uh, I would say, whether deliberate or accident, mm. accidental, uh, 
very uh, practical self discovery. Mm, As yeah. in, not the kind of self discovery where you just sit down and you know meditate, <laughs> yeah. but you have actually uh, lived through the trials. Yeah, I like that word practical yeah. because what it means actually uh, <laughs> is that you look at the industry. Yeah. Because the industry tells you if they like it or not. <laughs> yeah. Like like it's something that John Mayer said that I really like. He said that uh, a lot of people think that the audience is stupid. Actually, no, the audience is smarter than you are. Like, and, and if the audience don't like something, it's not always because they don't get it. Yeah, yes. I mean, they just get it, but they're like, eh, it's okay. You yeah, know? yeah. It's, so, it's, it's not what uh, resonates with them. Yeah, so yeah. a lot of times, like, um, a lot of artists get caught in, I don't think get caught, like, like, like reasonably so, they, mm. they delve on the, the mm-hmm. edges of, mm-hmm. of expression, and that might make it very hard to access. Mm. So, if it doesn't resonate with people, but it's something that you like doing, then that's okay also. Mm-hmm. But I think it's important, like we're talking about the word practical, to also take stock of the impact that you have. Mm-hmm. And that's actually mm-hmm. what it is. It's not, it's not just about money for me. The, the role that money plays in terms of me thinking about the impact that I have is that is somebody willing to part money with it? Mm, because that's, that's when they truly like something. Because it's very easy for me to just say, hey, that, that's cool, I like that. Mm. But can I put my money where my mouth? Will you pay to yeah. experience or try this thing? Yes, right? and and real dollars. Oftentimes, it's not the perfect way of ascertaining real demand, mm. but it's a pretty good one. <laughs> it's a pretty good <laughs> one. I have to part with something that I use my time to earn. Yeah, yeah. To enjoy. Yeah, a it's actually the the purest form of of, so. of, ju- of judgment of whether this works. Yeah, mm. and maybe there will be some better way. Yeah. That's why I say not perfect because there are some gaps that, mm. of course, you know, in terms of demand. You can't quite feel. And then there's also something to do with pricing. Maybe mm, it's just a pricing yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's pretty damn good. Yeah. It's, it's very close. It's yeah, very it's close, very right? Close. Yeah. Thumbs up don't mean anything. I tap my screen by. <laughs> I tap my screen by. <laughs> I can do it already. Thumbs up don't mean right. anything. If you yeah. ask me, though, last time my friend always asked me to vote for their thing, then you gotta yeah, lock yeah. in this and that. Yeah. Or I think that one actually quite quite some commitment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But well, I tell you, the best one is still money. Yeah, that's true. true. So it, treat money, in my, my opinion, I, I think I treat money as a a way of gauging the world's interest in my mm. work. And that's practical. Yeah, and That is reality slapping you across the face. That's right? something that uh, art schools really never go deep into. I think some do. La. Depending some on do, the lecturer. Yeah, I yeah, try yeah. to be a lecturer that, yeah, that yeah, will, yeah. will I think, give I think this... the system is changing because uh, when I first uh, stumbled into the art school, right? I, yeah. I decided, okay, this is the place I'm only going to get my paper because it seems that they're all smoking oh, is crack. It? They're all smoking crack. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. very practical because yeah, we yeah, went yeah, to the same yeah, school, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, so, crack, crack. I didn't think that, you know, yeah. I'm like, oh. Yeah, when I went in, I was like, no, Because it's a place to express yourself, right, I think, right. and it's great for that, like, but um, it's not so, like, portfolio yeah, preparatory, yeah, yeah, crack, crack. It's I not say it that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Because I tell you that, uh, I don't know other schools, uh, but I think in terms of animation, our graduates are not so... Uh, easily hireable. Yeah, yeah, commercially ready. Yeah, yeah. But I tell you, um, I think ADMers make for great uh bosses and 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 good business creators. That's true. And, and there are so like many artists. There's so many that have a lot, uh, succeeded yeah. greatly, right? Yeah, yeah. There's something about that system that also is good in this true, other true, way. True. Also, yeah. I think there's uh what what we need to understand is that actually there's virtue in every experience, right? Good or Maybe. bad. That means whether the experience. I read this uh in some philosophical book mm-hmm. once that despite uh, you might go through great disaster you might go through great joy or mm-hmm. great pleasure mm-hmm. but at the end of the day what that joy and that pleasure will fade mm-hmm. then you'll just be a memory and right. the only thing you can take away is like how you re- remember it right and right, then how right. it actually built you as a person right so the feeling yeah. the plus yeah, and yeah. the minus of it goes away Correct. but the actual thing that yeah, happened, the learning the lessons yeah, like, that like, stays with you like, like why do you enjoy it or like uh would you still enjoy it in the future? Things like that. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's great. Yeah. And I, I feel that um, in the creator economy and things like that, everyone's trying to strive for a perfect business model, right? Mm-hmm. But other than business, if we just talk about life, what's a ideal day in the life for you as a creator? Well, that's a question I ask myself a lot now. And um, because I'm at the point where it's quite a bit of a crossroads. Because mm. the company is doing well to the point where if we want to, I think we can expand to the point where we are more like board directors kind of, mm-hmm. I guess. Mm-hmm. La. But it'll, it'll be a journey, la, of course. Mm-hmm. But I tell you, we, we really enjoy running the business so much mm-hmm. because our colleagues are our friends. Mm-hmm. When we go into the office, we don't get as much work done as when we work from home. Mm. But 
we like it because we yeah. get to talk about our family, the, the our tribe friends. of people yeah. coming together to build and that something. is surprisingly enjoyable I never yeah. knew that this would be something that I enjoyed so I used to think that my ideal life is like I work from home yeah. then uh, the, the shit gets done I only work for maybe like four hours yeah, yeah. then I can work on my own stuff because yeah. outside of I mean we talked about this a bit earlier but outside of the work segment I also would like to push the boundaries creatively mm. and it's better to do that whenever I can I try to do it work segment when I can but we're also a brand sponsor so mm, mm. there's a limit you know so I also would like to expand my own capabilities as a storyteller mm, mm. Uh, that's how I think myself now I'm not an animator I'm, I'm more like a storyteller real storyteller whether that's photography or videos or what so ideally mm. do a bit of office work do a bit of my own work then I walk my dog twice a day then I spend the evening eating dinner with my wife and then I either play game with her or I play game with my friends and that's it oh, okay. I think like uh, I used to want a more exciting life where everything was different but actually I realized I'm a, I'm a very boring old man <laughs> creature old man. Of, yeah. Yeah, I'm very creature of habits creature so of habits I, I really yeah. like the same things yeah, yeah. now I check the curtain check see what yeah, yeah. Check, <laughs> check the curtain and check that's day, yeah. like and subscribe <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and speaking of Kurt Day and all the all creators that you've interacted with, right? Mm. What is something you feel that is uh, in the creator DNA, whether they are making money or not, that makes them want to put themselves out there on the yeah. internet? It's very interesting uh, because like, in some cases, uh, people would create and publish to the point where it actually makes their life worse. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say who, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> For a few examples, you know, right? But... But it's, it's just some compulsion that we have. And I, I think like, like we we're talking just now about like, oh, if I cannot do creative stuff, then how? I think like I'll be miserable. If <laughs> I like if I was a business person working as a banker or what, yeah. I'll still try to do use the money yeah, that I earn yeah. to then buy some time to yeah, do it to, later To pursue on. the craft. Yeah, right, we yeah, see this yeah, a lot. Yeah, you know, yeah, not yeah, just true, in creative, true. like yeah. um, people dream of doing F&B and yes, yes, they yes, will yes. be a very serious salary man for a long time. Then yeah, they yeah. quit and they, they start their own correct, business correct. Uh, doing pubs and stuff, you know? So it's not just creators, everybody has this passion. Mm-hmm. But passion without the temperance of reality, uh, yeah, it's, it's just dreams. It's right? dreams yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to cross the bridge from dreams <laughs> yeah, into reality, yeah. you have to do it with a good dosage of yeah, yeah. Reality, practicality yeah, right, about right, the market, right, right. about the world around you. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's not even that you do something wrong, it could be like the timing not quite right yet. Mm-hmm. And then that will fuck you up. Yeah, correct. So I guess, you know, don't don't put too much I mean, enjoy it and stuff, yeah, yeah. but but if you can't make it for a living. It's okay. It's okay, right? Yeah. Don't kill yourself. Yeah. And, and it's not your identity. You and know, you are not just your ability to create. You are also, you know, you are also who you are as a father or a mother or a son. There are so many other things in life. They are not so special. They are beautiful in your day-to-day moments. Mm, mm, mm. So now I think about being a rich person, but also I, I, I go downstairs, I take a walk and I see a, a, a family, uh, a mom mm. and a dad playing with that, that child. And that's happiness too. Mm, mm, that's mm. a happiness that is I would say common because a lot of people have that version of happiness but they are each uniquely mm. happy in a way that nothing else can replace it. So that's also there for us. Mm. You don't have to be a creative genius that does something that nobody else has ever done before to have a good life. Right. And, and sometimes I, the correct answer for a student, right, I tell them, yeah. maybe for you to lead a good life, I always tell my students that I'm not here to teach you to be a great creator. I'm here to help you maximize this thing this skill so that you can have a good life. <laughs> that's actually the, the, the yeah, end goal. Correct, no? correct. That's, that's and sometimes true. the answer is that you shouldn't do this. That's true. That's actually true. Yeah, but you should try. Yeah, you should at least try. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah, not a dampener yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. you know, sometimes the answer is no. And you realize that sooner, okay, Anna. Yeah, and okay, I guess Anna. that's the difference between us and AI. Because the AI is not doesn't have this existential it just makes you right? know, a question of how yeah. they Live a good yeah, life. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Rescue. In fact, this torture is a part of the creative process that the mm. AI tries to mimic. But just the fact that I know, even if it's virtually indistinguishable, I want to consume art from another human being. Mm, 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 mm. And That's part true, of that. what they make in yeah, the yeah. process, the imperfect yeah, result, yeah. which AI will mimic. Correct, correct, AI correct. will mimic imperfection mm, mm, mm. because they can create perfection. Yes. They will mimic imperfection in a way to mimic humanity. Mm. But I don't want that. So what if you can do it? So what if you can scale a company so that you can do it at a high level? I don't care. Mm-hmm. I want to know that this is made by somebody with pain. Yeah, and that's actually interesting because nowadays we see, our, we were talking to another uh, guest earlier on in the week. Um, he's the founder, uh, Ken, from uh, Shout Out to Ken, CEO of Artbox. He realized mm. that 
you know, how Artbox grew is because they have uh, so many people, even not just from Singapore, but the region that want to actually go onto their platform and try, like you say, try their hobby, their passion, yeah. and then yeah. and then uh, they have the platform to reach the masses for yeah. that. Yeah, right? yeah. And it's, it's and it's great and and um, look, it's not not against AI too, yeah. right? Like if you want to do it for industrial purposes, and mm. AI is such a buzzword now. Everybody talking about ChatGPT and freaking Mid Journey, yeah. but there are so many industrial applications of AI that mm. actually it's just good and just has been working for years. Yeah, before. that's right. Yeah, it's a very big thing. Yeah, yeah. it's not just this stuff that we see yeah. at the front. It's not just Nvidia. You know, mm. so many things. So you know, it's it's okay on. Uh, it's okay. Think, yeah, I I think. Uh, Everything in life I have found so far, especially on social media, is like the bad thing is probably not as bad as it seems. And the that's good thing true, is not that's as true. Good. Yeah, the good thing is not try. as good as yeah, it seems. Right. 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 The, the person throwing stacks of money, half the money fake. You know, yes. like, it's yeah, always yeah. like that. It's always right. You see people yeah. carrying the bathtub of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, then you're like, what's going on here? Yeah, yeah, what's yeah, yeah. yeah. What is security? Are you going to try to feel like Yeah. Yeah, so I guess to sum it up, we are actually just uh, the AI of flesh and bone. We're just the AI of flesh, bones, and emotions. The AI of flesh and bone. Uh, how how I put it? So AI is all mechanical. It's codes, right? Lines of codes and things like that. But the human algorithm is actually just based off emotions, memories, mm. and uh, our bodily existence. Yeah, and that's what I care about. Yeah. As another human being. As another human being, right? Yeah. yeah. I do like some AI stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, they like to do those like as a way of conceptualization, they'll say like, oh, what if, uh, you know, Blade Runner was the 70s? Ah, yes, I get what I mean. Yes, yes, yes. I like yeah, it. That's awesome. I like that's it. Awesome. I can't just yeah, like, yeah, you yeah, know, because yeah. they're replacing some of the jobs then, great, oh, great, fuck great, it, fuck yeah, 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 yeah. Because that's actually yeah. a form of entertainment. Yeah, it's just yeah, for yeah. fun, yeah, la, yeah, you know, great, and, great. and I don't think any studio right now yeah, yeah. can just take that and completely do a series of that. Maybe next time can, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very scary now though. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, everything in the middle. Everything it's in scary, the middle, but right? also yeah, yeah, yeah. work on yourself. And work on yourself. Right. That's why I, I like, actually, nowadays, I, I know this thing about IG. I follow a lot of artists on IG, and nowadays, I gravitate towards the IG stuff that is very, like, hand-drawn. Ah, I get me. Yeah, the very raw kind of Yeah, especially thing, with right? the yeah, advent yeah, of reels, yeah. you know, oh, like, yeah, like yeah. people actually drawing yeah, the stuff. Yeah, they're filming themselves, like, creating yeah. the it's image. It's coming right? back into Vogue. I think that might also be in a response to AI, that people mm-hmm. don't just want a beautiful mm-hmm. outcome. Mm-hmm. They want the process. They want the warts and all. They want the the, the ugly stuff. Mm. And then now I see government comms doing it a lot. And I think it's okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes, drink yes, driving, yes. just have some vague art. Then you look closely, the thing all wrong one. Yeah. But it's okay. <laughs> it's, okay. It works. it's okay. It's tax based, money's being saved. I don't yeah. know. But is this also the job of some artists that got fucked? I don't know. So, yeah. you know? <laughs> but I'm not against it. Yeah. yeah so at, at the end of the day, the, uh, the human experience is about communicating ideas. Mm. Right, we are just a species of uh, people trying to, you know, get our ideas across, be heard, mm. be seen, and maybe uh, coexist. Hopefully, as a whole and individually as well. I think that that's that's quite true. Yeah, ideas and also emotions, which is something that I guess AI can make also. Uh, but that's the thing I don't like about AI when they take like real artists. Yeah, they are screaming. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, if you take Rob McQuarrie style. Oh yeah, wow. Rob the McQuarrie's, great, the great Rob McQuarrie. Yeah, I mean, yeah, his, yeah. his stuff is the yeah. result of decades of hard yeah, work and, wow, and that guy is a exploration. Legend, yeah. Um, For, his, 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 I guess, trauma. And that's what style is. Mm. Style is a deviation from reality. Mm, mm, mm. If I draw a hand in an artistic style, what makes my hand look like a, like my hand is the way that I draw that is wrong about it. Correct, correct, correct. So it's actually a lot of that in the flaws that the preferences, get, yeah, the, yeah, the beauty correct. comes in the stuff that's not done well. So for an AI machine that can technically do it anatomically beautifully mm. and perfection to photorealism, to purposely mimic my trauma and my yeah. mistakes and my failure to draw exactly correctly or my choices, uh, I think if you're doing it at the expense of a known artist, I think that's wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I just I think I'd put that, that out there. That's, uh, that's something like a uh, ethical uh, crossroad. I think so. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe you make it so that his estate or whoever artist <laughs> is being paid. Uh, yeah. Like if, if they generate your the problem with yeah. your thing, you get like a little bit uh, maybe that more. Yeah. Like, Actually, there are, there are, there's some like um, US case regarding this kind of stuff that's going oh, on now. I think so. Yeah, They're yeah. making a model that, that uh, can do that. They're, they're trying. They're trying. I think yeah, that's yeah. my, my, yeah. my, I think my ideal suit, vision. And then they, they, they are trying to discuss something. Yeah, my yeah. ideal vision is like stock photo. Yeah. So it's a platform by which I have to opt in. I submit ah, my okay, art. Okay. That means you, you knowingly. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and okay. if my art is 
popular. Picked. And it becomes popular. Or, or it is picked as well. From, it's like sampling in a song. Ah, okay, right? okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, sample yeah, from there, this, this, like this. copyright and then they all get like, cuts. like royalties and ah, things they all like get that. Cut. Yeah. Ah, then maybe That's can, actually not bad. Right, yeah, something yeah. like that, right? Maybe it actually makes pick. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Idea for all the investors and whoever is out yeah, there. Yeah, all the tech bros that are watching this, right? Yeah. So... Having having you know gone on such a multifaceted journey as not just an artist but a, a business person, right? If money were not the object oh. of concern one yeah. day, yeah, right, what would you be creating? Uh probably a, a film. A uh, film? Uh, my, my first love is still animation and I mm. still watch films mm. uh, and I'm a student of films and I, I, I love films so much, both animated and non-animated. So uh I actually fell in love with uh, animation at the age of 14 mm. and I watched uh, Princess Mononoke wow that's awesome and yeah, then that shit was like what the f- yeah, what what's, what's is, going on <laughs> yeah, I wanna do that <laughs> yeah, yeah. now whatever that is yeah. I'm all in yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. come find out that yeah, thing yeah. is very hard to make yeah. you know, yeah. and, and we'll, we'll and do and, so and, at and the and cost caught, of my life and cost a lot of people their, their life yes right? yes <laughs> yes so uh, if money was not a problem I'll make films uh, but also oh yeah, it sounds so stupid to say this but Money should be a problem. Having a limitation actually, it's actually a lot good. of times it's actually is good. It results in something good. Right? Yes, yeah, because yeah. if you have unlimited yeah. capability <laughs> to create, there is no boundaries yeah, yeah, for yeah, you true, to true, decide true, on true. something. Everything amazing, uh, probably everything amazing was made in a vacuum, a mm, very tight with, and With some and constraints. Vacuum. Some constraints. Like uh, my favorite documentary that I've seen so far recently was the Beatles one. The, the, the two or three part Beatles documentary oh, that's nine yeah. hours long about how they made their last album and you just see how oh, acrimonious their wow, freaking wow, relationship wow, wow. is. What platform is that one? Uh, I think it was like Apple. Uh, Apple TV. Uh, yeah. Ah, okay, okay. It's like, uh, it's just their Nine last hours. album. Yeah. Wow. And, and, and the Beatles, I think objectively you can say are one of the most successful creative correct, correct, correct. Uh, groups uh, uh, collectives yeah, yeah, yeah. of all time. Yeah, yeah. They're only together I think seven years mm, and they, they changed they the world. so much, right? Yeah. yeah. And even then, the process by which the album was made was so tight and so tense. Mm. So a lot of times, the good stuff is made in, in tight vacuum. Correct, 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 correct. You need like pressure to Constraint, you need diamond. constraint, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of like you see some Hollywood directors then, uh, the work they're known for at the lower budget still stands the test yeah, of the time, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 correct. That was that, like, 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 they make whatever the fuck they want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I also <laughs> feel like, like if yeah. Work Simon ever was to, let's say we, we, we oh, become yeah. very successful, uh, that we can like, uh, each retire. Mm, mm. I think I fear that my life after that, right, is just downhill in terms of creativity. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. you don't know when you'll be creative. Because you're afraid you fade to irrelevance, right? Yeah, or that <laughs> this is the best thing that we ever did, which is not bad actually. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. But the thought of it is like, oh, actually, oh, maybe like... the brilliance or the, the good thing that I can make is because I have my co founder putting oh, me back okay, sometimes okay, okay. and vice versa. Mm, and mm, my mm. ego tells me that. That means I suck. But actually it's not. Because mm-hmm. it's two of us together that made something beautiful. Mm. Because we pull back each other. Mm. And I'm glad that I had this lesson la, in, in limitation. Mm. Even if I have unlimited resources next time, the projects that I make, I will put a boundary around it. That's true. On purpose. On purpose, right? Yeah. So that the, the end result is something that's been distilled through the pressure cooker. Yes. Right, right, has, the, I, I believe right, it has yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah, really. Because when there's no pressure, there's no uh, quality. Yeah. Right. Because your decisions are just made by throwing more and more resources. Yeah, more money, right? There's no compromise. There's no choice being made. You it's just okay. want it and you have it all. It's like the tech startup that pour in 100 million. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, and look what you get. You, look what you, get. you yeah. get like management teams that are not very committed. The, uh-huh. the founders will not, like you say, like actually bend over and fix the damn thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are all bloated stuff. Yeah, that's true, yeah. that's true. Yeah, cockroach again you come co- and co- The cockroaches win in the end, create guys. Like the, the, create yeah. like a cockroach. And I think yeah. that's a... Uh, that's a mantra that we want to end this podcast on. Mm. The mantra of like, yes, it's cre- great to find yourself, but at the end of the day, if you want to create something of lasting impact, you've got to think like a cockroach. Yes. I love that, man. Right, because uh, the cockroaches will be here beyond the apocalypse. The cockroaches will live, yeah. man. Yeah. The cockroaches will outlive us the dinosaur all, right? outlive, yeah, outlive yeah, us. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Thanks, Weichun, for coming on the Singaplex oh, great, Thanks for after me. Office yeah. Hours podcast. And all you guys out there, wherever you're watching, like, subscribe, share, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for having me.